Hello learners, welcome to this session of NIOS. Today in this session, we will be discussing teaching learning methods on observation. So before we get into the session, let's see what are the objectives of this session. Number one, today in this session, we will learn what is observation method and how we can use it in EVS. Second is how this observation method can be linked to some other methods and make learning in EVS interactive. Before we go into the observation method, I will like to spend two minutes on what is a method, what is a teaching learning method. As you are all teachers and we are also learners at the same time, when we go into the classroom, how do we decide what to teach and why to teach and what is the method? So before can do we decide spontaneously when we go in the classroom or we think before getting into the classroom or is it pre-planned? Yes, you are right. Teaching learning method and the content is pre-planned and it is planned in advance. So, if I say that teaching learning method is a structural representation of the content and the concepts to be taught, number one. Number two, it is the mechanism of classroom transaction. Te the choice of teaching learning method depend upon the objectives of the lesson. Each method, whether it is an observation method, experimentation or field visit or any other method of teaching has its own merits and challenges. How to choose a method will depend upon the content to be taught. It is the content which let us know what method to be taught. For example, let us say I want to study about plants which are present in our school garden or I want to study which are the insects which are there in our school garden. So observation is a very good method. In that method, we will take children to the school garden and observe carefully plants or insects. Similarly, if I want to know what is the need of hygiene, then a small group discussion will be an appropriate method wherein children in classroom will discuss about the need of hygiene. In another case, if children want to know how wheat come, how wheat reaches us, in that case to a wheat field is a very good method. So, the content to be taught will determine the choice of method, but it is not the only factor. There is another factor which is nature of learners. As we all know, everybody has different learning style. Children, they learn differently. Children have different intellectual abilities. Children think and learn differently. Some children learn better by listening and taking notes. Some children learn when they observe carefully. Some children have you know, knack for doing experimentation. So every learner in a class will have a different learning style. So it is, it is always a good idea to use variety of methods for teaching of EVS. Children have, children in this primary age group, primary classroom have limited attention span. So for them, it is always advised to arrange activities and wherein they are all actively engaged in the activity. Observation, now coming to the observation method. Observation is a way of learning. Now what is observation? Observation is something wherein we use our sense organs, sense organs of sight, which are, which are eyes, touch, hear, taste and smell. So anything which we come to know by using our sense organ is observation. EVS is all about observing, exploring and discovering the world around. By observation, we are constructing and reconstructing knowledge based on our own experiences. Let us see, what is this? You, you see a picture on the screen, what, what do you think it is? When I ask this question, what is this to class 5 children? Some of them said, ma'am, this is stairs of our school in which 
the top stair is little higher. Some other one said, no, this is not stairs, this is, this, is a, this is a game wherein you roll a ball from the top and the ball comes down. So, is it, are these observation? What do you think? Are these observation? I will say no, these are not observation, these are inferences, these are inferences of those children. Observation will, will be simple that this is a pattern, pattern of lines drawn in, in a manner where two consecutive lines are at 90 degrees to each other. So, when we add our interpretation to observation, this becomes inference. So, you have to remember that there is a difference between observation and interpretation. When we are using observation in EVS classroom, we have to plan for the task. Let us say I am planning for observation of plants. So, I have to think whether the task should be individual, whether the task should be a small group task or whether the task will be a pair task. So, one has to plan for it, whether it is an individual task or a group task or a pair task. After that, we have to give clear instructions to children what are they expected to do in observation. Observation is not something that you go and observe. You have to give clear instructions to children about what they have to do in the field, what they have to do and uh, do in the field and what records they have to maintain. In some cases, teachers can also prepare checklists wherein students can see what all they are, they have observed and what is yet to be observed. Second is when we observe something, it is observation and then recording because unless and until we record something, we tend to forget. So, it is always a good idea to record your observation to the all pointers mentioned in your worksheet or checklist and after that recording, analyze your observations, interpret and then generalize your observations. We will see in some specific examples. So, this is an example of seed observation. You can uh, start a summer kitchen garden in your school or a winter kitchen garden in your school wherein you can sow variety of seeds like for example, kidney beans, lentil, gram, fenugreek, carrot, spinach, mustard, canola and many other. So, before sowing, you can ask children to observe those seeds carefully. Children will observe seeds. What, what do you think they will observe? You are right. They will observe shape of those seeds, how the shape of one seed is different from other seed, how the color of one seed is different from other seed, how the texture is different or similar. So, they will observe shape, color, texture of the seeds. They can name the seeds, they can draw the pictures of the seeds and after that they can make some similarities and differences between seeds. They can even, yes you are right, they can even smell, they can even, they can even smell the seeds. So, in this particular task, the senses which are used are sight, touch and smell. So, according to some attributes, different attributes, children can even classify seeds. To explain it better, let us take an another example, wherein a demonstration of floating and sinking of, of different things was organized in classroom. So, in this demonstration, a teacher took few things like chalk, bottle cap, paper plate, stone, plastic spoon, screen, lemon. What she did? She took she took a jar, a big jar, glass jar, wherein all children can see. Children make a semicircle and sat in front of the teacher with their notebooks. Yes, of course, with their notebooks. She, she took one object one by one and she uh, put those objects in the container. As teacher put the objects in the con container, children recorded their observation in the table like they, they recorded whether the chalk, 
whether the bottle cap sink or float. So, in this way they recorded their observation on the table. So, after experimenting with all things, children were able to classify things, classify things which can float and which can sink. So, similarly in another example of observation of bird, teacher can you know teacher can ask children to observe different birds, observe their size, observe their color, what is the shape of their beak, how is their body, how is their neck, head, eyes, how, how are their feet, wings, tail or any other special feature or sound. In this case, if a worksheet is given in advance where all these parameters are mentioned, so these parameters will give a direction to learners to you know to make a progress in their observation. They will be able to see whether or you know what, what are the all things they are expected to observe. During the initial you know during the initial exercises of observation it is always good idea to give learners some pointers so that they do not miss any other any point. Now, let us take this example. This is a blood report sample. I am sure you must have seen it in your EVS textbook of class 5. There is a chapter titled a treat for mosquitoes. So, this blood sample is taken from that particular chapter of class 5 EVS textbook. It is given on page number 69. So, you can ask children to observe that blood report and answer some questions. Questions like when was this test done? Whose test is it? How old is the child? How do you know that it is a blood test report? And what, what is the finding in the blood test report? So, observations are not always you know outside the classroom. Observations are also inside the classroom. There are various examples like this in the present EVS textbooks. Taking an another example, let us see what is this. I am sure you all must have come across this railway ticket during your life. So, we can observe, we can distribute such railway tickets or any other kind of ticket or document and ask children to observe. This ticket is taken from this EVS chapter, uh, EVS chapter 8 reaching grandmother's house from the class 4 textbook. You can ask questions like what is the train number, what is the date of journey. So, when you observe that ticket carefully, you will see that with, with your support class uh, children will be able to know, you know they will be able to identify that where is this train number written, where is the date of journey written. So, with your help and facilitation children will be able to find out yes the train number is 9037, date of journey is there written on the ticket. So, you can ask some more questions like for how many people ticket is reserved, what is the birth, what is the coach number, uh, where is the train starting from, where is this reservation from and the persons are going to which place. Yes, when you observe carefully you will be able to see that a reservation is from made from Bandra to Ratla. So, these are some kind of observations given in the textbook. Let us take another example. You must have seen this picture from a picture in the EVS textbook. This example is from class 3 textbook. You see there are two different families. One is Venus family and other is Renu's family. And now moving ahead, the, there are six pictures. In this slide they are, they are only shown, there are only four pictures. So, this is the next picture. So, there are two families. Venus family and Renu's family. So, in this chapter, this chapter is titled the story of food. In this chapter, children are asked to observe the picture carefully and then answer the answer some questions. So, it is uh, questions like what kind of work are people doing in both the families? So, they can observe carefully and see different kind of work done by people in that picture. Is your family like any one of these families? So, this question is giving 
children an opportunity to think beyond observation. So, observation is linked to your own interpretation. You are making now you are now you know you have asked children to think about it. That is your family like any other of any of these families? If yes, like which one? Which one is your family? And how is your family is like their family? What is the similarity or differences in those families? Similarly, you can go beyond that and ask, do all people in your family eat together? If not, why? So, now you have given them an opportunity to think beyond and also question things which are happening in your family. That if not all people are eating together in the family, why are they not eating together in the family? Who eats last in the family? That is very important. Who eats last in the family? Who does not help in cooking in the family and why? So, these questions, if you think it is, you know, this particular example which is there in this class 3 textbook is, is starting with observation, then an encouraging, think, encouraging children to think about certain questions. Questions like, who is not, you know, who is eating last in the family? Why is that person eating last in the family? How is your family? Who is eating last in your family? And also, you know, encouraging them to question certain things which are practiced every day in the family. So, observation, after observation it is thinking, encouraging children to think and then questioning the system. So, by such questions we are beginning with observation and we are beginning with observation but we are going further. Now, let us come to this picture. I am sure you must have seen this picture in the textbook. Where is it? Do you remember? Yes, it is in the class 5 textbook, chapter titled Wall Tells Stories. So, the, is this picture is taken from that chapter from page number 98. Now, go back to the picture and see. There are some questions we can ask about, we can ask about that picture. For example, what kinds of work are people doing? How many men and women are working? So, by this question children are expected to first to see what are the different kinds of work people are doing. Then they are also expected how many means they are expected to count how many men, how many women are working. Do you find people who are not directly performing and building tasks? Yes, are there? Yes, there are. Who may be? Who may they be? What may they be thinking of? So, there are people who are not doing that task. So, who are those people and what they people, what those people are thinking? Describe various tools and things used to perform the task the people are engaged in. So, by such questions, you are encouraging children to observe and also to think about different kinds of tools and things which are used in earlier times. Similarly, another question like, have clothes worn by people changed entirely between then and now? The picture, uh, people shown in that picture, what kind of clothes they are wearing and how, you know, our clothes are different or similar. So, are there some similarities to clothes people wear today? If yes, what are those similarities? If no, what are the differences? So, by going by that observation, you are not only observing, you are also observing, thinking, making interpretation and then coming to generalizations. So, going further in that picture, you, there are, uh, you can ask questions like, were you able to see the man carrying water in mashaks? Mashak is a leather bag. So, what are mashaks? Why do people carry water in mashaks those days? Why, why is it that? People can come down and have water, but why not? Why man is there carrying water? What are the ways in which materials are transported to the construction site? So, such kind of questions can always be asked by showing a picture. So, what we have seen that by observation, 
we we can do observations in the field we can go, uh, do observation in classroom we can do observation in a demonstration so observation is the first observation is the first i will say that first um, teaching learning method used in the evs classroom observation is always linked with some other method to make it more meaningful but i will say that observation is the beginning there are certain advantages of observation number 1 it encourages children to explore their environment number 2 it helps children to acquire knowledge from real and concrete situations and number 3 it satisfies and develop curiosities so by using observation method in this lesson we have learned that observation skill is very important for teaching and learning of evs number 2 we have also learned that observation is what we learn through our senses number 3 we have learned that observation and inferences they there is a difference when we interpret observation by our own uh, perspective it becomes an inference and we have also learned that we can use observation method along with some other method to make teaching and learning of evs more meaningful for students and for ourselves so i am sure after this session you will try some observation experiences in the classroom and you will be able to see that how children observe different things and they come up with their own observations and their own observation records so i am sure that you have learnt about the observation method today and we will meet you next in the in the next class thank you